All right, in this lesson we're going to look at finally the the shortcut of and the rules of differentiation without using the the definition of a derivative. We'll use that definition to derive some of these formulas, but um, in the end, eventually you'll be able to sh do the shortcut for all. So we're going to look at constant power um, and constant multiple rules of differentiation, sum and difference. We're going to differentiate a natural exponential function. We'll look at the slopes of tangent lines using these shortcuts and also finding a numerical derivative on a calculator. But let's start with the constant rule. It is the most basic derivative and probably the easiest one to, to calculate. And it basically says the derivative of a constant d dx of c is equal to zero. And so the question is why does this make sense? And you know one way to look at this is just to graph a constant function. If I graphed a constant function f of x equals c, I'd have a horizontal line and I know that the slope of uh, any value, the slope of this line at any value is zero. So it would make sense that that f prime of x would be equal to zero for all values. Now we can also derive this, I mean this is more of an intuitive approach, I mean it makes sense that the slope of, it, of a horizontal line is zero, so the derivative would be zero. But we can also use the definition of a derivative. So I have f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So what I do know is that the limit as h approaches zero well, f of x plus h, well, since this, for every x value on this function, the y value is c, right? If I had 1, the y value would be c. If I had 2, the y value would be c. It does not matter. So f of x plus h is equal to c. f of x is also equal to c. So you end up getting 0 over h. So I have the limit. So I don't even have to plug in the, the 0 for h yet. I'm going to get 0 over h, which is if I take the limit as h approaches 0 of 0, my answer is 0. So this is using the definition the definition of a derivative to show that the, der the derivative of a constant is 0, but intuitively it just should make sense because the slope of a horizontal line is 0. So let's just look at some examples. These are all very easy because they're all uh, the derivative of a constant, but I'm just trying to get you to play around with the different notations and get used to those. So if y equals 7, y prime equals 0. The derivative of a constant is 0. If f of x equals 10, f prime of x equals 0. Again, not trying to offend you, just trying to display some different notations. s of t equals 3, s prime of t would equal 0. And y equals a natural log of 4. The natural log of 4 is just a number. If I pull up the calculator and just do natural log of 4, it's a decimal value. It's an irrational number, but it's approximately equal to 1.39. So the derivative of the natural log of 4 is the same thing as the derivative of a constant, which would be 0. All right, so we're first going to look at the, or now going to look at the power rule. And it says if n is a positive integer, then the derivative of x to the n equals n times x to the n minus 1. So I'm not going to use this rule yet. I'm going to, um, off to the side, show you a proof of why this is true. Um, it involves expanding a binomial kind of in a generic sense, and I will I'll show you the steps to this. You're not responsible for proving this, but you should go through the steps and understand each step, the algebra in it. So if you would just take out a, just a blank piece of paper for the proof. We'll start off by saying that d dx of x to the n is equal to the limit as h approaches 0. Now f of x plus h is just equal to x plus h raised to the n, just substituting it in the original, minus x to the n all over h. Now, the tricky part here is expanding a binomial. And, you know, you could Google this online and, and look, look up binomial expansion. Um, but this is the generic formula for, or the formula for expanding a binomial. So 
when you expand a binomial, you raise it to the second power, the third power, the fourth power, um, the, f the, the first term is always going to be the first term s raised to that power, and then the last term is going to be the second term in that binomial raised to that power. And in the middle, in this case, the powers of the x's are going to decrease by 1 in every term. So you have x to the n, you have x to the n minus 1, n minus 2, um, until we get down to just n to the 1. And then the very last term would have n to the 0, so n wouldn't even show up. And then notice that the h's um, increase in power. So in the first term, if you had an h there, it would be h to the 0. Now we have an h to the 1, an h squared, an h to um, an h to the n minus 1. So that's just one short of, you know, in here you'd have a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and whatever this power of n is, the term before the last term would just be n minus 1, and then the last term would be h to the n. And so what we're going to do, if you notice that if we focus in here, um, each one of these terms has an h in it, and I'm going to factor it out. And so by factoring an h out, really, in the first term here inside the parentheses, the h is gone. An h squared becomes just an h to the 1. An h to the n minus 1 becomes an h to the n minus 2. We have got 1 less. And an h to the n becomes an h to the n minus 1. So now I'm actually, this, this right here, this expression is just the first part. It's the x plus h to the n, this whole thing. And so now I'm going to put it back into the formula for the defini definition of a derivative. All right, so now, I know this looks crazy, but this first, this whole piece right here that I'm putting my, uh, you know, if you see the cursor is moving around, that is x plus h to the n. You'll notice this coefficient n times n minus 1 over 2. I welcome you to look up binomial coefficients on the internet and just see if you can kind of explore that a little bit. There is a, there is a formula that's kind of more involved than what we have time to get into. Um, and then minus, in the original formula, we need a minus x to the n. So there's our minus f of x, right? We've got f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So you notice that, as we said before, nice things happen when you use the definition of a derivative. The x to the n's cancel, leaving us with just h times this whole mess over h. And so now we are allowed to cancel out the h's, leaving us with this limit. So with the x to the n's gone, with the h's canceled, I now have the limit of this polynomial and uh, this expanded binomial. And you'll notice that if I'm going to have let h approach 0, any term that has an h in it is going to go to 0. So this term right here has an h in it. It's equal to 0. Any of the terms in the middle here that we've got that dot, 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 we've got the ellipsis there, all those little terms where x to the n minus 1, x to the n minus 2, all of those terms are gone, as well as this term right here and this term right here. All terms that have an h are gone. The only term that is left is this first term. So the derivative of x to the n is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of n x to the n minus 1. So if there is no h in this term, then the derivative is just n times x to the n minus 1. So I, I just want you to know where that comes from. I really think it's a good idea for you to try and get your head around each of the steps, even if you don't haven't expanded a binomial before like this. All right, so let's go back to the problems. Um, in the next video, we'll have you practice.